to show our exclusive live performance from Tom, Indy, Pops and Jean playing live in the studio. But we kick off today with straight in at number seven, another brand new event for Game Master and the pulsating pants party with Things With Wings. <laughs> I've opted for something rather different. A three-part challenge on the Nintendo 64 classic Pilot Wings. Three teammates will each face a different task on the game with a time limit of three minutes, 30 seconds for them to complete the whole challenge. The first must navigate his gyrocopter through 10 rings. The second must score a 25-point bullseye on the cannonball level as quickly as possible while the third must once again straddle his copter and shoot down ten balloons from the night sky. Time is of the essence, so it will be up to each contestant not to let the side down by wasting valuable seconds. Oh, I do love a threesome. Now, I often ask people to dress up in various uniforms for my own personal viewing pleasure, and today is no different. Our contestants are technically pilots, but I'm sure they would have done it anyway. Please welcome Jeremy Attridge, Mark Chappell, and Paul Milnes. <laughs> Right, Jess, tell us how, um, how far, what's the fastest you've ever flown? Well, the jet does uh, Mach 2.2, but I've been twice the speed of sound in it. And what's that in Skoda terms, miles an hour? It's a bit faster than your average Skoda, it's about uh -huh. uh, 1,400 miles an hour. Okay, and like, how long is your flights? I mean, like, we have, if we fly abroad to film and we do like, you know, 12 hours to get Los Angeles, how long do you guys fly? Uh, typically, if we work in day to day, it's going to be about an hour, hour and a half, but uh, I've been up for as long as eight and a half hours. Do you, do you get in-flight movies then, you know, for that long? Uh, no, you get a nice navigator to talk to you, though, <laughs> and they, they can whisper on a bit and uh -huh. tell you some good stories, uh -huh. yeah. Now, chaps, you joined uh, at the same time as Jez did on April Fool's Day. Why, why was that? Um, I'm not sure if that's the Air Force playing a joke on us or us uh -huh. playing a joke on them, but that's the way it worked out. Yeah. Now, you, you, you do a lot of instructing. Is that kind of like a like school? Are you like the teacher then, and did they like take the mickey out of you, the pupils? Uh, we have a, a good working relationship. It's like being out of school. Bit of a laugh. Uh -huh. That's good. That's good. And uh, finally, Millsy, you're all in different squadrons but the same base, is that correct? That's right, yeah. What's it going to be like going back to base if you don't do this challenge? Um, if you think of nightmares, if we mess up at any stage on this game today, then the banter will be horrendous when we get back. Mm -hmm. And they don't muck about with banter? Oh, no, no, no. On uh, military bases, do they? Quite harsh, I should think. Okay, while we get the guys in position, let's find out what's happening in today's news. <laughs> This Easter sees the release of the console version of the arcade classic Manx TT. Featuring two tracks and an initial choice of eight bikes, the game comes with a host of options including mirror mode, bonus bikes, two-player split screen and apparently even a racing sheep cheat that was in the arcade. It's a rare cause for Saturnus to celebrate. Since we're getting near the end of the series, we thought we'd give you an exclusive peek at the PC game everyone will be talking about later in the year, Unreal. Making full use of the new MMX chip, Unreal sports the kind of graphics that make Quake look like it's running on the Game Boy. Lastly, I do apologise for the appalling quality of this footage, but it's the only material we could get our hands on of the new Street Fighter 3D arcade game. It's Street Fighter, yes, but this time Joy of Joys is in 3D. Some new characters are in evidence, but it still looks, smells and tastes like the Street Fighter we all know and love. It should be in the arcades later on this year. news action there. Now, Millsy, Jez and Chaps uh, aren't actually the Arsenal midfield, although they send it out there. I say all fighter pilots and they're about to do our event on Pilot Wings on the Ultra 64. Kirk Ewing has been my co-pilot for this particular challenge, which is why I've put my arm like that in a Me kind too. of pilot co-pilot manner. Now, um, Kirk, you are from Viz. Yes, I am from Viz, but today I'd actually prefer to be known uh, by my codename, which is Purple Monkey. Okay, that's uh, Kirk's call sign today and I'm going to be Choke Chicken. So, Kirk, have you got any tips for the guys on this first part of the challenge? First part of the challenge is the river run, where you're flying your gyrocopter. Basically, hit all the rings, don't miss a ring. And if you have a real problem, try and hit the white rings, because that's going to give you an extra five seconds. I mean, you can maybe loop back around and, and do one if you miss it. Or carry on to the other parts of the challenge, because yes. 
This is a three-stage challenge. The guys have got three and a half minutes in total for all three stages. I'll explain the intricacies and subtleties of each stage as they come to them. Best of luck, guys. Your three and a half minutes begins now. Okay, so off goes military in his wee gyrocopter. You can see a radar on the screen with a little yellow blob coming towards it. That is the first ring that Millsy has to fly through. He's going to fly through 10 rings. We reckon he wants to be doing them in about one and a half minutes to leave enough time for his other two teammates. Here comes the first ring. You've got to get the height just right as well. And he's safely through it there. We're looking for the second ring there. It's not a bad start there, Kirk. Not bad. Choke chicken at all. Uh, as, you can, as you mentioned earlier on, once he's hit one ring, the next one opens up. That's why it's imperative that you get through every single one. Okay, that's number two ring clear. We can see number three in the distance there, Purple Monkey. Yes, indeed, Choke Chicken. Actually, this gyrocopter reminds me of Little Nelly as flown by Sean Connery in that famous Bond movie. That's right, Little Nelly. Little Nelly. Yes. Okay, that's the third ring. 45 seconds gone, about halfway through the time. We reckon he should be taken. He's just coming up for the fourth ring. That's yeah. it, he's through the fourth ring there. We're looking for ring number five. 55 seconds gone. This is all right so far, Kurt. I've seen some awesome aerials so far. Now, if you can just get lower and down in it, but he's actually a bit of a chicken. He's gone, he's gone for the blue one there, Purple Monkey. He could yeah. have gone for the white bonus one. That would have given him an extra five seconds, but he's playing safe. One minute, ten seconds gone there. There'll be tears in the squadron tonight. Okay, that's the sixth ring safely through there. One minute, 17 gone. This is going to be very, very close here. I would, have, I would like to have seen him do it quicker, Kurt. He, he could have done it a bit quicker. He also could have hit that other white ring on the left-hand side there. But he has cleared the bridges, and as you can hear, the crowd go wild in the background. Okay, eight rings clear now. There's a white one there. He's going to go for the bonus oh. ring. He's through the bonus ring. That's nine rings, but he's going to have an extra five seconds. This team is going to be up there. He's going to go for another one. Oh. That's it. Stop the clock. That's the ten ring there. One minute, 38 seconds. But he did get a ten-second bonus. So we're going to take that down to one minute. 28 seconds for Millsy. Excellent display there, Kirk. It's a damn good flying. Now we're going to go to Jez on the cannonball. That's right. Now, what tips can you give Jez for this? Well, uh, we reckon he's got about 40 seconds to get this guy launched into the big target. However, if he does manage to do it first time, then he's going to help out the teammates a lot. So that's really what we're after, is to try and get this down as first as possible. OK, yes, indeed, because uh, we basically... Millsy has actually gained the team at two seconds, so they've got roughly two minutes and two seconds for the final two parts of the challenge. About 40 seconds is what Jess is going to be looking for, but if he can do it first time, that will help out. Best of luck. Let's see that cannon, Jess. OK, this is the cannon. He can uh, move the, the cannon up and down, left and right, to try and get the trajectory. The power indicator on the left-hand side of the screen, that's low, and it's going to shoot right up to high there. Wonderful. He's fired it. Let's see where it's going. This looks good. Oh! It's quite obvious that Jess has got the big match temperament there. That is incredible, Leon. This takes the time up to 1 minute 42 seconds Whoa. for Jez. Jez, make way for Chaps. <laughs> okay, Purple Monkey, the final leg of the challenge. Chaps are shooting this time with the gyrocopter. That's right. What tips can you give him? He needs to get gun down 10 balloons. Gun down 10 balloons. Now, he should keep his speed quite slow for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if he goes off the course, he can bank round a bit quicker than if the speed's slow. And secondly, sometimes you're going to find five or six balloons in a row, and you want to be travelling at the right velocity so that you can pop all of these at one time. Okay, and you don't just speed right over the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's lock in and get them. the balloons, you know what I mean? Get them. Okay, kirk has gone all Top Gun on me. Uh, right, okay, we reckon the chaps would need about 1 minute 20 seconds to do that. Now, this is very difficult, even that would be cutting it quite fine because of the sterling display by Millsy and the immaculate display by Jez. He's actually got 1 minute 48 seconds. Now, that sounds like a long time, but it means that if Chaps mucks this up, he is incredibly bad, just everyone, yeah. everyone back there at base, just to bear that in mind. I think that would be what's called a beasting for Yes. Him. Okay, then. All right. One minute, 48 seconds left. Best of luck, Chaps. <laughs> Your time starts now. Okay, so off goes Chaps on the runway. We're looking for 10 balloons. It's at night there, but the balloons should be quite easy to see. On the radar, the left-hand side of the radar, you can see that little cluster of yellows. Now, that is quite literally the balloons he's got to gun down. We should see them coming into view in a second. There they are now. So, um, Speed-wise, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, 130 kilometers an hour. That's all right, Kirk. No, hang on. First rocket gone. That's oh, one balloon gone. Fantastic Nine balloons start. to go. Two minutes, eight seconds gone. I mean, Two balloons. It. You would expect it of these guys. I mean, really, look, we've got four in a row here, so if he can just position himself, he can go right along something like that and bang, Three bang, balloons. bang, take them all out. Four balloons. No, he missed one. No, it's four. 
The time wise, he's got two minutes 25. He's just got over a minute there. That's five balloons now. He's got to get five balloons. He's got a minute to do it. Kirk, he's banking round now. He's banking round, but he's not really dropping his speed, so it's going to carry him quite far out into the area. But he's got enough room he can come back in. There's one, two there. There's six up on the right hand side. They may be quite tasty. Okay, it's quite a wide bank he did there. Yes, that was the rocket. That was six of them. Four more to go. He's got Fantastic. four five seconds. That's seven now. Over the power factory. Three more. That's two more. 35 seconds left to go, he's only got two blues, this is looking good. Oh, oh, he's a bit of danger over there by the mountainside, he wants to avoid that, absolutely. But here, here he's now. Go. Is that one going to go? No, he missed that one. He's missed twice. Oh no, he got one there, he's got one more to go, but he's only got 20, 18 seconds left. He's firing. That's it, he's done it, it was just a shot, but with 15 seconds left in, the play boys have done the challenge. Excellent work, guys. Let's uh, let's let's take the three parts of your challenge uh, in order. There, Millsy, you started off. You finished uh, two seconds under the split time. Gained the team two seconds. Talk us through it. Yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't the fastest run in the world, so I had to take my chances on the bonus points. And uh, well, it worked out in the end. Thank God. It did again, just uh, two seconds. And then we went on the Jets with the bullseye. What can I say? First time, you, you gained a further 16 seconds for the team there. Were you nervous at all? I don't think I've ever seen so much pressure, actually, Cho Chicken, in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that compare to flying a tornado then? Was it, was it, was it worse? Uh, yeah, about the same, really. About the same kind of pressure and uh, tenseness. Uh -huh. Now, chaps, on the face of it, yes, you did well, you did the challenge, but the boys have bought you 18 seconds of time. You did it with 15 seconds left. So technically, if they hadn't done that, you wouldn't have done it. What I'm saying is you were rubbish. Uh, what I'm saying, Donnie, is team game. And of course, um, <laughs> as a team, we like to play to the crowd. So I thought two seconds, three seconds, just keep it tense towards the end. You'd never know he was an instructor, no. cool. would you? Do you know what I mean? That's, that, that's good. Well, listen, thank you very much indeed uh, for coming in, guys. It's uh, always nice to do work with men in uniform. Uh, but uh, the Games Master Golden Joystick goes to the Flight Lieutenants, Jez, Millsy and Chaps! <laughs> okay, coming up in the second part of the show, we have one of my favourite bands of all time. Obviously, I'm very excited. We're almost in a pant-changing situation. To spare my blushes, you can look at these adverts. Welcome back. As I said before the break, I'm very excited about tonight's guest. I had to change my pants. The pants have changed and I feel like a new man. Well, there is a first time for everything. Let's find out what today's celebrity challenge is. It's time to get a bit racy now, as this next challenge will be played on touring cars, the latest arcade racing game from Sega. Players have four laps to decide which of them is king of the road. And uh, as usual, we'll be moving between our two contestants' point of view to keep abreast of the action. Let's burn rubber. on Games Master, we've had uh, Take That, E17, EYC, and I apologise profusely for any help we may have given them in their careers, because I hated all of them. At last, it's good to have a band on who I don't want to suffer horribly in a plane crash. Please welcome Martin Rossiter and Steve Mason from Gene. <laughs> Now, Marlon, I want to start with you, and I want to talk about objects thrown onto stage uh -huh. while you're performing. Uh, what are some of the things you've had hurled? Well, the, the, the first was a pair of Y fronts with uh, some sort of cryptic message uh, crayoned on them. Um, I've had a large pant or a small. It was pant? a small. It was a small pant actually, but still Y. <laughs> uh, Steve, I presume it's a singer that gets the most stuff thrown at him. Do you ever get stuff thrown? Um, occasionally, but I've got my guitar to hide behind, right, you can so I can always use it sort of like a cricket them. bat. Do you ever feel annoyed that you've been kind of linked, you know, you are part of the great Britpop indie fraternity, and you've never been down as a boys band? 
You've never been bracketed with take that and <laughs> sadly. I know, it's, it's most annoying because I've got the thighs. Yes, I mean, you're both very good looking men, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, you're Thank you very sweet, much. Sweet, sweet. You're this me blush. This is the 90s. Yeah. And finally, our, um, our oasis proof that Darwin's theory of evolution is untrue. <laughs> I refuse to comment. <laughs> Damn, you can never get them slagging each other off unless it's in the pages of the enemy or the mail debater. Okay, guys, uh, if you'd like to assume your driving positions, okay. I will go up to the commentary box. And giving me lift and support for this one is Mr. Kirk Ewing from uh, Viz. Okay, Kirk, have you got any tips from Martin and Steve uh, on the touring car? Okay, in this smashing Sega game, the touring cars, the cars are quite literally sliding all over the place. Now, the best thing they can do is follow this sort of oily slick. It's a line, a black line that runs around the track. And if they follow that, that's going to give them the best line for going into the bends. That'll make the whole thing go a bit faster for them. Okay, thank you, Kirk. Just a word of caution for you, the viewer. You will actually see two screens sliding uh, back and forward. This does not mean anything is up the duff with your telly. This is so we can uh, quite literally flick from one driver to the other. So don't panic if that happens, OK? Uh, Martin and Steve have got four laps. Whoever crosses the finishing line at the end of the fourth lap will walk home with the joystick. Best of luck, guys. Off you go. And they're off. And if we begin uh, with Steve and Mason's screen here, you can see the car in front of him with a flash of missiles. That's Martin. Martin's made a great start there. He is quite literally in the lead, and Steve is banging into the hoardings car. Yeah, he's, he seems to be a bit random here. He's sliding all over the place. Bang, uh, and he's, he's overtaken oh, by... Oh. No, but Martin brings it back. It's turning up front here. Martin Ross are still in the lead. We're still stick on Steve just now there. No, because it's begging. We can see Martin's car in the back, and none of them driving particularly brilliantly, though, Kurt. No, but Martin was doing some... Oh, he was doing I, some quite evasive driving, but that's it. He's over to the mouse team. Let's switch to Martin's, and we should see Steve in front of him. Yes, yep, there's the is. flashing SSS. Martin coming up on the inside, switching. Oh, oh yeah, beautiful switch on the inside to overtake. Let's go back to Steve's one, just as Steve attempts to overtake. Never. He does it. Let's go back to Martin's. He's <laughs> swapping is. hands all the time, Kurt. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, let's face it. Martin tried some nice evasive tactics there, where he was literally just trying to sort of push, slide back and forward in front of him, but it didn't really work for him. And, it, uh, it was an aggressive drive. Yeah. Okay, you can see that we are just coming uh, towards the end of the second lap, just halfway through the challenge. And if we go to Steve Mason's screen, we can see Martin still ahead of him. His 3Ms flashing in triumph there, Kurt. I think Martin's pushing out in front, and I think he's maybe showing a bit of quality over Steve, but just that he's inside, and he only, only slipped through He's there, not letting him by, though. Great driving by Martin Rosser. Remember, there are other cars on the track, but we are quite literally not concerned <laughs> about them. We don't give a chuff. OK, then, uh, right. still, still on Steve's one here. He's quite far behind, but he seems to be following the race. And then he's overtaking him. Brilliant tactic there. Once again, right up the end. Well, tactic, I say tactic. It could be just a, a bit of a fluke. OK, that's the end of the third lap. We're in the final lap now. We've got Martin Rosser's screen. We can see he tried to get past the but he tried to go on the tarmac to do that there, Kurt. It, that is not generally the accepted way to overtake it. As we said, I mean, you could follow the lines, but hey, just throw caution to the wind and go sliding around all over the place. OK, Why still not? on Martin's screen. We can see Steve's in front of Martin's going for the s oh. Congratulations, Martin. Thank you very much. Commiserations, Steve. So it goes. Now, uh, Martin, that was uh, quite an aggressive race from you uh, at, at times. What, what were some of the tactics that you were employing there? Well, it was simply to uh, convince the world that I'm not the uh, work shy fuck that they think I am. <laughs> How does, that, how does that compare to other driving games then that you've played? Um, well, I'm a Daytona addict. Uh -huh. I've been known to sort of go up to uh, Oxford Street and pile in pound coin after pound coin. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's good. It is good. Um, Although there could be a little, a little more feel in the steering wheel, oh. I think. But it's it's um, it's a fine game. Steve, you could have done it with a little bit more feel somewhere <laughs> along there. Where, where did it go wrong for you? It was only three seconds in it at the end. Uh, I it's just the car was too sensitive for me. I just didn't have the control necessary. But why didn't you talk to it and try and understand its problems then? He's used to track Next time. <laughs> <laughs> and the album is uh, quite literally out now, and the name is, the title is? Drawn to the Deep End. Drawn to the Deep End. I would yeah. uh, thoroughly recommend that young people invest their uh, free coinage in this particular piece of CD. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, guys. Be well, Golden. Games Master Joyce, then I'm very proud to announce goes to Mr. Martin Rossiter from Jean. <laughs> okay, once again.
again, wow. foreign heads of state of Telephone Channel 4 begging me to bring a bag of funniness into their unishumalist countries. The following piece of film is quite literally the result. <laughs> Sega's arcade machine division have produced the greatest arcade games in the history of the world, bar none. This is their base in Tokyo. It's so exclusive and so secretive that only three Western journalists have ever been in this building. And none of them have returned. With titles like Daytona, Virtua Fighter, Max TT, Virtua Cop and Gunblade to their name, Sega's arcade division is quite literally the Melinda Messenger of the Sega Empire. And blow me if there isn't a fine selection of quality arcade games here. I've obviously quite literally come to the right place. The division is grouped into various departments, AM1, AM2 and so forth. Assistant director of AM3 is 25-year-old Mr. Yamasta. What is it that makes the Sega arcade division and, and the teams the best and most respected in the whole world? At Sega, we're all massive games fans, and over the years we've developed a unique set of programming skills. Also, our development time is not limited, so we can spend as long as we like ensuring that every game is absolutely perfect. Is there any rivalry between uh, yourselves and the AM2 and AM1 teams? Well, a little, but it's healthy competition, and it's why as a company, Sega is better than the others. The latest AM department is AM Annex, their first title touring cars you saw earlier. Head of development is the man who produced Sega Rally, the cool Tetsuya Mitsuguchi. We're trying to produce a more realistic style of gaming experience. A video game is a combination of imagination and reality, but before you can let your imagination go, you have to study reality. For touring cars, we spent months studying real racetracks, taking hundreds of photos, recording all the sounds and doing tons of research. I don't think any of us got much sleep. Barely boring. Surely there must be some compensation for working at the world's leading arcade developers. One final question. Kono uh, Shigatono o Kagede on Anoko Karo Mosumata. I'm afraid not. Because I'm so busy, I rarely have opportunities to meet people. In fact, many times we spend the night here in the office. We sleep under tables or on desks. Everyone sleeps wherever they like. It's crazy. And this is the result of all the hard work. You too can get yourself a Corvette Stingray, one of the classiest production cars in history. You're working so hard you never get the chance to drive the thing, but it does make a very nice paperweight. Well, that's it for today's show. Next week sees the final show of the series, and weather legend Mr. Michael Fish will be gracing us with his presence. Um, while you wait for that, I'll leave you with this question. If God had meant man to fly, why weren't we born with a jet engine and in-flight drinks trolley shoved up our bum? Good night. Unlike other political factions, the Games Master website has a coherent policy vis-a-vis -vis the European Union. Log on now and check out our hard AQs. Thank you.